effect on my career, one of the earliest memories I have is that she knew everything that was going on, not only through her natural curiosity, but other apologists would write to her and tell her what they were doing. And I'm, I'm really grateful that she flew me in early on something called Ostashevsky's example, which was just a wonderful thing that I could work on and think about. But I don't want to talk about her mathematics. I thought I would tell two instances uh, about her. And as you may know, she was a student of R.L. Moore. She was, in fact, a 21st student, PhD student of R.L. Moore. And she graduated in 1949 from the University of Texas. Her first, uh, first appointment, first position, was at Duke University. And uh, helping her get there, and part of the attraction was uh, my advisor, John Roberts, who was Moore's seventh PhD student. So he had been there several years already, and then Mary Ellen, in the fall of 49, came to Duke University to begin her career. Now, Roberts and Mrs. Roberts had a tradition of inviting the graduate PhD students and the graduate faculty to a party once a semester. In fact, uh, 15 some years later, they were still doing that when I was a student. And there was a graduate student at Duke University who was finishing up at that same time. His name was Walter Rudin. And Rudin and Walter and Mary Ellen would come to this party. And while Roberts liked to show off his house because in the basement he had a workroom where he, he built things. He, for example, he built a piece kit on a television set. <laughs> and in the first floor was a big uh, kitchen, dining room, and a uh, big porch, enclosed porch, second room, bedroom. And on the third floor, in a little attic space, finished off, he had his ham radio out there, called it his radio room. So these parties were happening every semester, and Roberts told me that he would notice during the party that Mary Ellen and Walter would not be around. <laughs> and he came to find out that they were upstairs alone in the radio room. <laughs> and he said he found it amusing that even in this indirect way, he was kind of a facilitator of their budding romance. <laughs> and years later, the administration at UNC Greensboro were asking around for speakers who could speak on women in science. And I suggested Mary Ellen Root. And they invited her, and she gave her talk. And this was at the end of the semester. And she was invited to become part of the platform party for graduation. So she went off to be on the platform party. And when I spoke to her later, she said she had met an interesting gentleman, a real old fellow, who was getting an honorary degree. And they had struck up a conversation. And. Uh, he asked her what was her maiden name, and she said it was Estelle. And he said, are you in your relation to, I forget the first name, is it Joseph Estelle? And she said, yes, that was my father. How did you know him? And he said, well, we were together on the U.S. Olympic team in 19, oh, whatever. And so when she told me that, she said, you know, you should file that away in the file drawer of Mark. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> So she was, uh, she was quite, a, quite a mathematician and quite a woman. She was friendly and jovial, helpful <clears throat> and supportive, and I certainly miss Mary Ellen Estelle Rubin. Thank you.